This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. This season marks a new beginning. Witness the raw power, iconic sound, and pure speed from the historic Lotus 79. Experience the competition and glory days of early 80s open wheel action. Watch as drivers wrestle these ground effects cars into submission. Drivers will face off wheel to wheel. For some, it's a chance at redemption. For others, an opportunity to make a statement. All sharing the same goal, to be crowned champion. 
who will be victorious tonight? The Lionheart Retro Series presented by Butt Kicker starts now. When you have a track that is just so good that they name a country after it, you know the fine folks of Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin must be doing something right. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. Ah, I'm just kidding. Come on. Yeah, they didn't name the country after the track, but they probably should have. Those are minor details, though. It's pretty simple. Nowhere else in America can you find a combination of cheese curds, brats, beer, and the best road course racing in the world, right? Robin Miller once said this track is the best test of road racing in North America. And who am I to argue with that? This is Road America. This is Thursday night. And we are live on the iRacing Esports Network. Tonight is round 14 of the Lionheart Retro Series presented by Butt Kicker. This is the DMLC Racing Channel Grand Prix of Road America presented by our good friends at Sam Maxwell Custom. Great to have you with us here. Beautiful Thursday night in Road America. I'm Jason Galvin, the banker. Brian Yazik joining me tonight. I'm Jed Yaman calling the shots. Good to have him back in Dougie Beard. Uh, the camera operator for this one. And this is the Sim Experience Countdown to the Green. Brian, Road America, I know, is easily uh, one of the most favored circuits on the tour, and not just Lionheart, but across the entire iRacing service. It, it is the pinnacle of motor racing in the United States, certainly. A picture-perfect track. Oh, you're absolutely right, Jason. Good evening, everybody. Happy Thursday to everybody here at Road America. I, You're right. I mean, it is, when you think of, of road racing in America, you think of, of this track. I mean, it, it's very iconic. And you can kind of see from the track layout right there, 14 corners, 8 to the right, 6 to the left, 4.048 miles. Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, and you're right. Uh, cheese curds, beer, and, and some of the best road racing uh, that, that you'll just find all around. It's, it's, it's kind of the perfect culmination of it. But, you know, we can talk about it. Jason can hype it in. I can tell you all the special little track facts about this joint. But the best way to get that perspective of how to get around this technically challenging road course is our GSRC lap guide, which we're going to send it to right now. All right, we've got Amjad Yaman in the GSRC Lotus 79, so let's do a lap around Road America. Coming across the start-finish line, the run down to turn one is going to be one of your best opportunities to pass. This first corner is admittedly pretty swift, but there's still plenty of braking to give you a chance to sneak up the inside. Watch the dirt on the exit, because it can spin you. As we run through the short chute to turn three, really focus on getting the exit right for this corner. Being able to defend or attack, as well as simply laying good lap times down, really depends on getting yourself a decent launch. You can see the moraine sweep is quite a long stretch and it'll end into the heavy braking of turn five. All of these factors combine to mean that this is easily one of the most popular passing spots on the track. Be careful though, because it's also terribly easy to overshoot. If someone has a nose in on you, try for the over under. From there, it's a quick blast to turn six where the crest on entry will catch many drivers out. Do your best not to skitter off into the grass. Switch sides and then keep it flat through turn seven. We're now into the hurry downs, which ends with turn eight. Sneak attacks are possible here, and a lot of times drivers aren't expecting the need to defend. From there, get to the left and give yourself a nice wide entry under the bridge into the carousel. This corner feels like it goes on forever, but ideally you want to get a little wide so that you can cut back and open up the exit. That'll bring us to the infamous kink. Thankfully, the ground effects on the 79 make it a less scary proposition, and you can take it flat. Into the kettle bottoms, the track is going to weave left, which means to line up your braking for Canada Corner, try not to come in at an angle. Hug the left side, get it slowed up, and be careful not to get too aggressive on the brakes because there's not much sand trap before you find the tires. After that, turn 13A will be blind, but once again, no problem in the Lotus. Get the car back to the left side as soon as you can and make sure to clip the apex and get to the power early for the final turn. Carry that momentum to ensure the car can chug up the hill with a lot of grunt behind it. Hopefully, you kept it all together and have now finished a lap around Road America. Well, 
Well, that's a lap around Road America. Uh, it's a long one here for sure, but I tell you what, when you're behind the wheel of uh, any race car, you never really stop working. Even the long straightaways here, you're always thinking about what's ahead of you and what's behind you. Plenty of passing opportunities. Uh, that's what makes this track so beautiful. This is the Sim Experience Countdown to the Green. Brought to you by our friends at Sim Experience, the team behind the Force Pro V2 Direct Drive Steering Systems. By providing unparalleled realism and the most advanced tuning features on the market, the AccuForce provides a significant advantage to any sim racer. And it can also make for an effective training tool for real-world drivers. For more information on the Sim Experience ecosystem, including the GS5 seat, the Stage Series Motion Systems, and the Sim Vibe software, head to simexperience.com. That's experience with no first E. So experience, simexperience.com. 5% off promo code uh, for the Sim Vibe software if you use the code SIMX. Lion, let's take a look at the point standings here as we are qualifying at Road America. And if you want to make four laps, you literally have to like get in the car right away and not make any mistakes. So that's what you're watching here in the background. Is point standings right now are presented by our good friends at Butt Kicker. And as you can see, this one has been all Mr. Ryan Otis so far. Although David Clymer is doing his best to make a run here, uh, catapulted by that win at Indy and a second place finish a couple weeks ago at Michigan. David's up there second in points. Paul Jenkins made a move at Iowa up to the third spot. Dustin Wardlow fell one down to fourth. And Chris Lanini, the most recent winner in the Lionheart Retro Series, moved all the way up into the fifth spot in the point standings. As we jump ahead and look at the team championship, and this is uh, no surprise, it has been all Raven Motorsports all year, split up into two teams this year because of the uh, change in the way the Lionheart team rules uh, are applied and Raven Motorsports Black with Ryan Otis and James Paulson and Dustin Wardlow have pretty much locked this one up. I mean, if they just show up to races from here on out, that is going to be your champion two years running. Although Raven Silver with George Anzaldo and Ron Hacker and uh, Travis Yeager Leonard have been caught. Firefly Racing, that big win from Chris Lanini, moved up to the second spot and uh, don't count out NLR either there. Mark Cohn and Finian are both. Awfully strong contenders, as we've already seen with Mark winning a race and Finian up on the podium in our most recent race. But kicker rookie of the year standings as they stand right now. It is the second place driver in the overall points, David Clymer, leading the way ahead of Paul Jenkins, who's third in overall points. How about that for the rookies? Chad Dalton, Marty Grommel, and Mark Cohn down there in fifth. Now, Mark did miss some races, so he's fifth in rookie points and ninth in uh, overall points, but... Uh, that is probably not indicative of the season that Mark has had to this point. Uh, also collecting a pair of wins and four top tens in this series. Qualifying has about a minute left here. And uh, you will probably see some things change the way that the standings are currently set up. And how about this? We've, we're going to have quite a race up front because Alex Saunders is, uh, has returned to the Retro Series after missing most of the year. And Sage Karam making an, appear an appearance tonight. And Sage has won every road course but one, and that one went to Ryan Otis. So uh, Sage and Saunders going to give Otis a run for their money, and suddenly what many believed maybe might have been a cakewalk, Yaz, not so much now. Three capable road course winners up front right now. Yeah, I mean, what's the old expression uh, when a, a, a immovable force meets an immovable object? Something like that. I, I, I feel like you're kind of watching a science experiment uh, unfold there because you have Alex Saunders, who is a well-known road ace. You got Ryan Otis, who's having, I mean, statistically, I would probably say one of the best, uh, probably one of, yeah, one of the best retro uh, uh, season-long championships probably from anybody that just from the consistency standpoint. And then you have Sage Karam, who has always jumped around and gone up, up and been up at the front end of the stick on the, uh, on the road courses. So it's going to be really interesting. And of course, as we talk about him, guess who lined up one, two, three, right? It's almost like I saw that before I uh, started talking about them. I saw it too. I just, <laughs> that, you know, <laughs> Let's take a look at the uh, starting lineups here uh, for the. Well, I gotta I gotta keep this in front of me because I, I love Mark Cohn dearly, but uh, we have a, a handful 
or a mouthful of words for this race. This is the DMLC Racing Channel Grand Prix of Road America, presented by Sam Maxwell Customs. And it is Alex Saunders capturing the pole. One minute, 53.930 seconds. Ryan Otis was second uh, down in the 154. Sage Karam, Mark Cohn in the 155s. Boy, how quick was Alex Saunders? He ran a 153 and fourth and ran a 155. Chris Reagan making his series debut, I believe, is in fifth with uh, Lionel Calisto, JP Winchell, Dean Mardi Gras Mall, Chris Lanini, and Scott Holmes, your top 10. In the 11th spot is the Candyman, Dustin Wardlow, with David Altman, who recently celebrated a birthday this week in the 12th spot. 13th, the Ryan Cones, Ron Hacker, 14th, 15th, the series founder, George Anzaldo, with Finian Ducana to his outside. Chad Dalton rounding out the next row with David Clymer. He's going to make a long row from the back to try to maintain uh, some of the early or some of the uh, momentum he's built up through the season. Travis Yeager liner, 19th, with Paul Jenkins in 20th. Jumping down to 21st, and it is one of the members of the first place team uh, overall. Team points drivers, uh, James Paulson. Let's try that one again. James Paulson, a member of the team that is in first in the team standings. That sounded better. James Paulson, Eric Block in row 11. Uh, Mike Belair and uh, wait, Richie Hearn. What? Richie didn't take a qualifying lap? That is brave. Uh, Frank yeah. Beezer and Mike Rigney and Adam Young and four drivers. Uh, I'm guessing that they all attempted qualifying laps and all picked up instant points or had a crash somewhere and didn't get them all in. So uh, if you are Richie Hearn, Frank Beezer, Mike Rigney, or Adam Young, uh, Amjet, get the onboards ready because <laughs> it, it's going to be fun to watch. Hey, speaking of onboard cameras in this race, yes, we have three of them. Uh, Tra Travis Yeager Leonard. Uh, is in the iRacing iFlag on board uh, for Raven Motorsports Silver. Mark Cohn in the DMLC Racing Channel on board for the number 39 car uh, with two wins this season so far. And we will ride on board with your points leader, Ryan Otis, in the Sam Maxwell Customs on board camera. Otis starting from outside of the front row with Alex Saunders on the point you know he has road america elk heart lake wisconsin as we come down the hill and under the cheese bridge here on this long pace lap opened way back in 1955 and if you don't think this track is something special it was recognized by the u.s national register of historic places that to me is super cool uh, and a fun little note about this track. But uh, this is the Lionheart Retro Series presented by Butt Kicker. And Yaz, why don't you tell us a little bit about the uh, details of this series? Well, the series details here, you got round 14, as we talked about, the two drops, the Lotus 79, which adjusted fixed setup, cash and prizes, $7,600. Now, I kind of rushed through that because there's something that I want to talk about. Usually on the pace laps, you hear these Lotus 79s, those engines just thundering to life. Well, if, if you notice, everybody's being real quiet because everybody is clutching. I'm going, I'm just kind of cycling back through the field. And uh, it is, it's as quiet as a procession of mouses coming down that straightaway right there, uh, right before the Speedville sign. It, everybody's trying to get to the, to the right number. So you kind of saw it there. 15 laps is the number that people are aiming for for fuel. But when you have a 31 lap race and carry the math, that you, you see where the problem's lying. So a lot of guys are really going to try working on extending that first stint to make it to just only having a one stop race. But Jason, I mean, you and I both ran this race last year. That's where do you fuel save at Road America in this car? Uh, when you're green, I think, to me, the easiest place to fuel save is how you take the carousel. And I know that I used to also, uh, in this car, I would clutch it going into Canada Corner. That felt like a, it was a really easy spot to do it. I'm, by the way, I'm trying to get something solved here, Yaz, so help me out. Uh, yeah, apparently, I'm they've listening. changed the distance of this race to 31 laps on us. Mm -hmm. Yes. That was news to me. Uh, oh, I saw okay. that our pl our plasma tracks race details graphic had it at 38 laps. My media guide has it at 38 laps. So there was uh, uh, there was a snafu in the in the schedule. That is what I understand. I yep, no harm, that. no foul. But 31 lap. Yeah, 
which I bet you now, you know, knowing what they know now uh, with the fuel window, I bet you they're probably hoping it was 38. Because then there's no hope. But right here, man, oh, you know, you'd probably be hoping for a full course yellow. I mean, is it, just to try to make it work. Just Jason, to be clear for sure. They're coming up the bridge, man. Let's get they're time to boot. coming up the hill. Ready to go for 31 laps here at Road America. And it's Alex Saunders and Ryan Otis springing him to the green. And Saunders is on the loud pedal. Sage Karam gets a phenomenal jump and is right up next to Otis. Is going to maybe have that position, but look at Otis now getting the draft. And Mark Cohn says... I want a little piece of this action as they head off into turn number one. Let's see if they can get through. Turn oh, we got problems out back. Problems out back. It is Finian that went spinning. There's a couple cars off into the gravel on the first corner. David Clymer second in points. Finian went spinning, and it was actually Clymer who got into him. And, boy, that started with a huge checkup. Ron Hacker was off the throttle way early and pounded the brakes with a car inside of him. Did a great job of recovering and caused all sorts of chaos. We'll get back to the replay, but David Clymer's car is severely damaged. Uh, also looking back at Eric Block's car that's hurt, and that has major championship implications up at the top of the point standings. Meanwhile, already working our way back through the back half of the racetrack right now. Uh, Alex Saunders coming down and going to head us into Johnsonville Speedville and through the carousel for the first time with Otis, who was able to hold off Sage Karam, thanks to that little bit of a draft, rolling on behind them there. Another car off, it looked like, back there in the carousel as well. I'm still I was struggling to find that there. Kind of saw it, as we kind of watched it on the screen, thundering through the kink. I think the kink is, is, is one of the hardest corners in all of, uh, well, all of the sim world that we kind of run across. Depending on what vehicle you come through here with, I mean, you have to take that flat out. But the cars don't want to go flat out through there. So it's really, it's it's the brain trying to overrule the foot. I mean, yeah, as I don't want to jump in here, David Clymer, who we mentioned was in that first corner wreck. Ooh. I don't know if we can maybe get back to him real quick. But he is, he just spun again uh, as he was heading down into turn eight. And as you can see, that car is really messed up there's the spin in turn eight for climber we're still working for uh working on the replay for the start because it was so chaotic uh, david climber's car seriously damaged coasting along at like 80 miles per hour max and that is going to really change things and we got cars off again is that canada finian oh, in the, canada that's the, that was the replay first lap well i got way ahead of myself there i missed that we were going to the replay here's another look and you'll see watch ron hackers that light blue car just ahead of finian Finney in the black and teal car. Here comes David Clymer in, third one to the party, nothing he could do. And then as more cars spun off, Clymer got touched. I think it was James Paulson who got Clymer a second time there. So back live now as that is going to really, really affect the points. We'll have to keep an eye on that throughout this race. Working lap two now of 31 here in the DMLC Racing Channel Grand Prix of Road America presented by Sam Maxwell Customs. This is the Lionheart Retro Series presented by Butt Kicker. Remember, fuel window, 14 to 15 laps, we're told. This race set to go 31. So uh, if you can get to 16, then you're definitely good. And if you get to 15, then it's uh, you probably feel pretty good given the pace lap. But if you've got a pit on lap 14 then it's a hold your breath time. So a lot of these drivers have been in fuel saving mode from the second we went green in this one. Saunders, Otis, Karam, Cone, that's how they qualified the top four. Uh, Lionel Callisto up a spot to fifth. Chris Reagan sixth. And here is an onboard. We're going to George Zaldo. I thought I heard uh, he, he had a He had a moment coming into Canada corner there. Another very tricky corner because you get that big run down the kink, down that straightaway, and then you kind of have to woe the car up to get it through this corner. And it's a lot, uh, and you kind of see just going out there and playing in the kitty litter. The corner, that, that right-hander is real tricky, especially in these Lotuses, to, to get that corner just right. Very, very easy to overshoot it and end up playing off in the beach there. Yeah, the other problem with Canada corner is not only is it easy to overshoot, as you just mentioned, Yaz, uh, but it's also easy to 
get the car in too much, if that makes sense. Uh, how many times have we seen drivers who go to cut that corner and they catch too much of the strip and they start chasing the back end, and Canada's kind of got this off-camber uh, opening up deal, and it just, boom, you're in trouble, just like that. So can Canada corner to me uh, is one of the trickiest corners in iRacing. I have, that's a corner I know I've personally always kind of had issues with. Uh, and the other one is six. When you go up the hill here uh, and turn left under the Corvette Bridge, that is just a hellacious corner, especially, especially in this car. Yeah, I mean, you're coming up that hill, you carry the momentum, but then it's a blind drop-off. So really, uh, that's where you see, you know, people that you can really tell who has done their practice and who's put their laps in because you kind of have to go into that corner by muscle memory. You know, Marty Gras. Or, 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 yeah. Just going to say Mardi Gras. I thought you were done there with muscle memory. Sorry, he has Mardi Gras under attack from uh, that is JP Winshittle, who's in the dirt. When, that's a perfect example. We talked about Canada Corner. They both missed it in opposite directions. I don't know if you noticed there. JP caught too much of the inside, and Dean was way too wide. And as a result of that, now a three-car battle because Scott Holmes is right there, yes? And looking to get that big draft coming up the front stretch, coming up the hill here especially with the Lotus punching that big hole in the air. I mean, Scott's going to be in a spot where now and here they're going to get side by side, which is going to make that hole even bigger. But that Road America is not wide enough for three cars into one. So luckily, uh, discretion the better part of Valor there. And Holmes just decides to fall in line. Uh, Dustin Wardlow just behind that as well, picking up a spot from Chris Lanini. And Scott Holmes was really pedaling the race car there as they headed off into turn one. And now let's see, Holmes didn't exactly get the best run out of the corner as we look now at Wardlow and Lanini, see if Chris can try to come back. But here's that three-car battle again, Marty Griddle and Holmes at the back. And I don't know if Scott's going to be close enough. Doesn't look like it. So they'll stay single file here uh, as they head down into five. And there's, you're just talking about that Corvette bridge kind of up the hill, off camber, hook a little bit of that. They come back around, but actually we're back out front. Sage Karam getting around Ryan Otis. So this is kind of what we were talking about uh, on the front end. Of, ooh. Oh, that is not a spot to make a pass. Wow. And a late move by Sage Karam as well. I don't know that Ryan was ready for that. And then look at Sage just kept it tucked up on the outside there. Yes, as they went through seven. Seven's not a corner you want to be too wide in especially trying on the outside and somehow Sage made it work. And here's, here's the move. I mean, Sage definitely showed that he was looking, but I don't think Otis thought Sage was going to stick it in there. And uh, instead, pretty good contact there. So let's go take a look at Ryan Otis's car now, your points leader, and see if you can see any damage on that race car. And I'm looking around and I don't see anything right now. So uh, hopefully for Ryan's sake there, just kind of a uh, catch a breath moment get back into a groove and settle in and you got to imagine Ryan Otis a very smart racer he has has to know he's looked at the standings and seen that David Clymer had problems and uh, Paul Jenkins not a road course expert by any sense of the imagination down there in 20th spot right now so from a point standings uh, situation Dustin Wardlow is the only other car that's in the top six in points that's also in the top 10 of this race right now so Otis just kind of needs to do his thing. As you look at Dustin Wardlow, Dustin started 11th and he's sitting in 10th right now. A little bit uncharacteristic, I think, for Dustin. I thought maybe Road America in this car, he'd be farther up. But I do know that uh, Dustin was having some computer issues a couple weeks ago. Not sure if that's uh, affected his ability maybe to get as much practice as he would like for this one. But I would definitely keep an eye on... Uh, Dustin here and see if he can't find a rhythm and start making up some ground as well. Dustin also the king of fuel saving, if you remember, he has a, a first Indy car win for Dustin Wardlow. Came at the Motegi Road Course last year, 2018, and he did it by saving more fuel and also somehow being the quickest car on the track. So I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see Dustin kind of knife his way up through the field here and also make this a one-stop race. Yeah, that race stings because I remember last year I, I qualified second. Dustin put it on pole. I qualified second. And I followed him for the first couple laps and he made a mistake. And and I got around and I'm like, man, this is going to be good. I pulled out to three seconds. Well, I had to make another pit stop and he didn't. So, you know, he, he, he kind of came away on that one in the winning, uh, the winning end of it. 
I mean, especially now with a lot of the telemetry and a lot of the software uh, that's out there. I mean, we're kind of looking back off of the engine cover there of Mark Cohn, the watchman, looking back, uh, watching what's going on behind him, more likely in the mirror. I mean, with all the software that's out there now for sim racers, I mean, it, it's, it's the fuel game has completely changed now. You're not basing it off of a feel or, uh, you know, trying to hit a number on the little F4 window, I believe it is, right. inside iRacing. Like, you've got down to the, I mean, every lap, that number can change. Boy, how much has that changed that you had to just ask which... Uh, which hot command box it was like is that the f4 box like that's how little we think of it like i'm not that's not making fun of you that's just no. how little it's a great point you bring up how little we think about it uh when we're in the race car in the indy car right because we just look over at what sim racing apps jrt pick your mm. pick your your timing device of choice or and half the look over. Ask me. <laughs> right exactly well yeah me too so you and i run different softwares um, and oftentimes we find each other as teammates on the IndyCar side kind of bouncing those numbers off each other. And I think that when we both know that we're clear is when everybody else on the team kind of goes, ah, okay. You know, so. <laughs> Cause sometimes yeah, they're off a little bit, but it's usually not much. I would probably say maybe half a lap at most. I mean, depending on the track. And, and we're talking and half a lap on, like track. not half a lap at Road America. Oh, <laughs> oh, George. George. His, his night's getting a little bit rougher here. The front end of that car is destroyed. Yes. And Frank Beaster, uh, is he just collect, out uh, trying to build a sandcastle, or he's <laughs> part of that too? China, somebody else was off there as well. Let's get a replay. Here is George, and George has actually towed it to the pit. Oh. So I think George's night is done. That's, a, that's oh, another that's... underrated corner. Uh, just that's... because if you put just the slightest bit of that tire, and Beaster just... <laughs> Time to make the donuts and keep going. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if Frank comes back and wins this, that's going to look pretty hey, cool. But see, there's win. somebody else off too. Is that was, was that Adam Young was off behind? It was, him? it was a riding shotgun car. I didn't catch the number. It was, it was Adam or Taft. It might have been Taft. No, Taft's not here. It was Adam. Look at that. Oh, Adam Forever Young. For once, I uh, for once I just uh, threw a dart at a wall and it stuck. Hey. Boy, look at this. Look at this hornet's nest coming up the front straightaway. Battle for 19th. That is an intense battle for 19th, let me tell you. Yeah, I mean, there they go. You see him weaving back and forth. Richie Hearn was probably raced on this track uh, in, in real life back in the kart days. I would imagine. Was he driving Wait, the, Richie. He the, yeah, the Budweiser machine, right, at one point? Yeah, and I think what, and then Food for Less, right, at one point in the IndyCar yep. Series, I believe, yeah. I had the Richie Hearn Food for Less IndyCar Series micro machine. There's a trivia fact. For That's you. a mouthful. There's a trivia fact for. Uh, was for it the that well micro machines? Uh, that was the guy that talked really fast on the commercial. I think that is correct. Hey, battle for 19th here. James Paulson inside a beaser. Richie can maybe stick his nose in as well. Oh, Richie, way to hang Ooh. on to it. Got back to the throttle a little too hard. Big bobble up the hill and under Corvette they go. Paulson to 19th. That's beaser in the blue and yellow car in 20th. Richie in the uh, Wilson Tennis Ball sponsored car back there in 21st. Well, let's go back up towards the front of the field. We got a battle for the fourth position heating up. Mark Cohn has it, and he has Lionel Little Train Callisto all over the rear wing of that Lotus 79. Little Train having a little bit of a mid-season to late season uh, revival, basically. I mean, the first part of his season, just no luck, couldn't, couldn't get anything to get right and get it going. And then lately, I mean, we've been seeing that 97 machine up more towards the front end of the field, which, quite frankly, when I saw he was on the, the list for the season, that's where I expect him to be every single week. Made a big run at Mark there, but couldn't quite get tucked up. And then lost some ground in turn one. One is a, uh, one is a really unique corner in the draft because it, the car pushes uh, almost like a, uh, an oval track in turn one here in the draft because you're carrying so much speed and in this car specifically as i know you remember uh you're not using a ton of brake getting into turn one it's not like the indy car where you got to pound down from six to third this car is is fifth and you go down into fourth and then you, you're kind of into third and like hug it real tight and you're almost back into fourth right away out of the corner so uh this car i i remember vividly having issues with it arrow pushing 
on the exit of turn one. And that's the only road course corner I can remember uh, in this series in either car that we run uh, in the Lionheart series or Lionheart ranks. That's the only corner on the only track where I can remember an arrow push. Scott Holmes issues, oh. I hear. Yeah, Scott Holmes spinning right after. That's right before the uh, the Johnsonville Bridge there. Let's see. Is it Now, was it a downshift that maybe got Holmes in trouble? Gets into the corner. I've been seeing a it lot is. of guys in practice. They get into that corner real hot, try to carry all sorts of speed, and the rear just slides right out from underneath them. You cannot shift this car late, downshift it late. If you try to slam the gears like the Indy car, this, this thing command. wheel hops big time. Also blows up, as I found out last year. Also an accurate statement. Indeed. Indeed. All right, let's reset our top ten here. We're on lap number eight. And, oh, who's that, buried, uh, who's that buried in the sand or the, the tire wall? Is that Mike the wire? Uh, oh, no. I had a great run at Indy and a great run at Michigan, too. And then off. To, see, this is exactly what you were talking about uh, a little earlier. You come off that corner, and that rear tire puts off into the black, uh, kind of the black abyss out there. And you just hook it straight into the tire barriers. Yeah, there is a really, really a tight window. This is still a replay. Uh, and a pass for the fourth position. Little Train goes around Mark Cohn into turn one. So on lap number nine, a change for the fourth position. Kalisto ahead of Mark Cohn. We'll take you back live now and look at that. Actually, we're going to go to P6 because I think we just had yeah. a pass there. Chris Reagan, the newbie. Chris Reagan and J.P. Winshittle going at it. And it's J.P. going around Chris, who's making his debut in the Lionheart Retro Series presented by Butt Kicker tonight. It's like uh, Chris out of the West region, so... Make of that what you will. That's pretty encompassing from, I would probably say, <laughs> Montana <laughs> over. West of the Mississippi. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what pretty, it feels like. It's pretty close, except for California. We got our own region, which is cool. You know, shout out. Yeah. Chris started fifth. He's dropped to seventh after that move. Yeah, JP, uh, you know, started seventh, back to, to uh, back up to sixth now. Did Sean uh, Ambrose just find my Micro Machines collection? Yes. Oh, yes. Go oh, look goodness. at this, dude. Yeah. Is that? I was yeah. Just yeah. clicking. Down. Yes, Alessandro oh, Sampedri, Davy Jones, Buddy Lazier. Oh. <laughs> look now, there were there were uh, there were two sets of these. Ambrose now needs to go find the other one because the other one had like uh, Eliseo Salazar's Menard's car. Um, and uh, and a couple other guys. So that's uh, that's Sean's that's Sean's next mission. Because I used to have an eight car Indy 500 in my bedroom six times a day. <laughs> there we great. go. I was hoping someone was going to post the link in the chat so everybody else could play along with that yeah. one. Is it in the YouTube chat? Yeah, go check those yep. things out. Somebody buy those. Oh, oh. Dalton. Oh no, is that Chad climber? Dalton. No, nope. Chad, Chad Dalton. Dalton. Is that right before the kink? Where is that at? That's After it. Canada. Oh, did Canada claim another victim? Oh, no, it's coming up. Was that coming up the hill out of Canada? Oh, that was up Thunder Alley. Well, that's kind of where it crests away. I, that's still a tricky corner. Oh, yo. Yeah, he kind of, it wiggled, and then you kind of have to chase it straight, and then unfortunately there was a bump there, and these uh, Lotus 79s, don't have a wide traveling suspension, so you catch mm -hmm. air. And no, you know, no tires gripping the, you know, touching the ground. Uh, not very conducive to stopping. Is that how that works? It is. That's science right there. Sean can, you put that on his next uh, uh, Dr. Lugnuts pit stopology. <laughs> that's gonna be a uh, that's gonna be a terminal result, for, uh, Chad Dalton. And this is eighth spot. And here's. Dustin Wardlow just blink out? Dustin oh, Wardlow was no. running down Mardi Gras. Oh, he blinked out. He's tracking down. Oh, man. Not again. Brutal. Did this happen at I missed Iowa? Did this happen at yeah, Iowa? Yeah. Happened at Iowa is he was pacing. Oh, thought, and he was all excited because he thought he had it fixed. And... Oh, brutal. Oh, no, wait, he's, he's back. back. He's back. Hey! What is that? I have, okay, I have never seen somebody gone for that long and make a comeback. Well, luckily, it rode America. A lap, it rode America. <laughs> and he didn't lose, didn't lose anything. Right? 
I didn't hear all 88 right. inning was David Justin Allman goes back hitting? and watches these broadcasts, and like sometimes I know his daughter and his uncle all tune in sometimes. Like they're probably all sitting there right now, like what in the hell are these two Yahoos talking about? <laughs> oh, Dustin, oh, that was opportunistic. <laughs> these guys don't know what they're talking about. He's been there the whole time. <laughs> Wardlow behind Mall. That is a battle in, for eighth. And if you've been enjoying some fine uh, Wisconsin liquid product uh there could be three of them so you know david altman on pit road first pit stop of the so race he's he's throwing the dice he goes there's no way i can make it so he's gonna go for the two stop 10 laps yep. 10 laps call it good i call wonder short pit both times so that i you... know <laughs> i have been that guy that pits all to himself on the strategy and it didn't work well for me, so David, I'm I'm hoping it works well for you. I uh, I vividly remember that night. Yep, Canada Canadian Motorsports Park. Wardlow around Mardi Gras. You saw it live. So Dustin up into the eighth spot. Dean Mall down the ninth, and now here's Dustin with a chance to again set his sights on some drivers. And let me tell you, all of a sudden, Dustin looks ahead of him there. Uh, I don't know how much we've uh, kind of been following. I don't think we've been following along because we've been all over the place. It's been kind of a crazy action-packed 11 laps. But let me tell you, from uh, from fourth on back right now, nobody has gotten away from each other. It's a little train and then Cone and then JP and then Chris Reagan, and they are oh, all... Oh, Richie. Oh, Richie. Right no. the carousel. Or right don't into do it, the carousel. Richie. Don't, I think he's shortened up the front end of that car a little bit. Let's take a look. Richie yeah, Hearn. They're fine. On Coming board. The carousel. Oh. Oh, downshifted. Hey, he didn't oh, hit anything. Just mowed some grass. All right, so he already had some front wing damage. Well, that's good. Richie would be able to keep going. I was looking at, all right, so fourth on back. And let's see if maybe Amjad, we can go catch up with this here. Fourth place is Little Train. And we know he got around Mark Cohn. But has not really opened up a huge gap. You see them going up the hill there, under the cheese, or down the hill, really. Uh, under the cheese bridge. I love the DRS sign as if Formula One raced here. That's my favorite. <laughs> Little train, and then there's Mark Cohn, right? Mark has done a nice job hanging with him. And then here comes JP and Chris Reagan right behind them. And we know Chris Reagan uh, is quicker, uh, or at least as quick as all of these drivers, because he qualified uh, up there uh, ahead of all of these drivers, except for Mark. And then behind them, Dustin Wardlow has already gapped Mardi Gras. Uh, by about a second. So Wardlow has a chance to start really picking off some time here while these four in front are kind of all bunched up. And the draft will help them, but it's also going to hurt their rhythm. And I think we're going to get a shot at some point here where we're going to have five or six cars that are all sorts of uh, hooked up. Travis Jägerlener has uh, also moved up in the standings now. Travis is up to the 13th spot. Chris Lanini continuing to go backwards. This is on board the iRacing iFlag on board camera. Travis Yeager Leonard for Raven Motorsports Silver. That is, I believe, one of our th three on boards today. It certainly is. We well, should now. be really paying attention to pit road here. Things <laughs> have to get interesting. Yeah. We both kind of had the same thought there uh, right off the bat. I mean, because uh alex saunders out front and has been pretty quietly out front this this entire time he has not backed off of the chip ladies and gentlemen best lap of his race was a 153.79 his last lap 153.85 that's not fuel saving <laughs> that's going full bore so i think when you look at guys like saunders and Karam and otis who have been kind of off on, on well, their own island well so ryan don't, otis don't, on his own island, but also not has backed off. He has his best lap of 154.4, his last lap of 154.4. Little Train just ran his best lap on his last lap, but look at Otis. Otis, or not Otis, pardon me, look at Karam. Sage was mm -hmm. eight tenths of a second slower on the last lap. You don't think that he's doing a little bit of field saving? Too. Yeah, and he's, no, he's beat it before. Mark Cohn is about a second slower, half second to a second slower per lap as well. So, and now what I'm what I'm curious though is when you look at guys like Mark Cohn, J.P. Winchittle, uh, Chris Reagan, these guys that you know we were, they've been in this pack. I'm wondering if maybe, maybe instead of passing, 
They get that you get that big run down the front stretch and maybe just leave it in fifth and just crack right. the bottle. Get a little bit. Feather I mean, because you bottle. do that a couple times, that could be that half a lap that you need in a couple Absolutely. of these in these specific spots. Absolutely. So it's going to be very, very interesting. I mean, Alex Saunders is coming to lap 14 now, and he's still on the track. Same with Sage, same with Ryan, and Lionel, well, he's working his way through to that final sector uh, right now. So the da- the dice has been cast. This this is the crucial lap of the race. This is going to tell us everything we need to know for the, for the last half of this event. Alex kind of out on his own right now and as we look back through the pack that's Lionel just coming down the front straightaway and Alex Saunders is like "Why well, I'm halfway through my lap already coming down the hill just went under the cheese bridge on his way into turn 5 as he came through the moraine sweep there and now up the hill we'll follow Alex Saunders here uh, for the majority of this lap unless we get some cars that start peeling off at the back kind of walk you around Road America here's turn 7 fast right-hander down a hill and this is a really slow turn eight hard left up through the gears towards the carousel some drivers downshift here some don't they like to use the rpms of the car to kind of rotate it back into the throttle and now one of the longest runs of being flat out on any road course in the world from the kink which is technically turn 11 here's 11a in kettle bottoms Still wide open, still wide open, still on it. Down towards Canada, and you pound the gears all the way down to second gear. Back hard on it, out on the rumbles. Here's 13. It's a quick left. Sometimes you got to blip the throttles. If you're light on fuel, you might not. Into 14, and that's the back half of Road America, or as I like to call it, the exciting half, because the front half is really just two right-hand corners. <laughs> not wrong. <laughs> and look at I everybody. Mean, they, they count there. four corners in the first two. I feel like the first half's an oval. If you look at the track, like it's turn one, and then turn two is really just a, a bend in the road. And then there's turn three, and then turn four is just a bend in the road. So two rights. That's I mean, what we're going to call the first half of this track. Yeah. Any takers uh, yet? Here Chris we go. Chris Reagan on pit road. He is not going to be able to make it. Sage Karam just went purple the last time, so he's I, there's no fuel saving in that tank. But now they're on that lap 15. So if they've made it this far, logic says that with the pace lap, they should be able to make it to the end now. You would think, yeah. The funny word, think, though, good. Chris, I think Chris Reagan is going to be... He's definitely in trouble. I think. Everybody else is good, though. They, uh, everybody else so far has done a good job. Here comes the last pack through at the bottom of the hill. Paul Jenkins out of 16th. Nope. James Paulson, Frank Beeser, Ryan Corns. Nope. Adam Young in 20th. No. David Altman in 21st has already pitted. Here's the battle down the front straight. Speaking of 18th, James Paulson, Frank Beeser. That's Beezer on the inside. Ryan Corns Ooh. behind them both. The Beezer will take the spot. Ryan Corns wants to stick his nose in there and keep Halston from shutting the door as they head down into turn three, and he is going to be able to do it. How about that? James Paulson loses two positions in two corners. Yeah, but don't give it back just yet. Don't, don't call him out just yet because here he comes down this unofficial backstretch. Huge draft opportunity, and then you come downhill. This is a great opportunity to send it into this corner. Meanwhile, the leader is in. Wisely backs up. Alex Saunders up the hill and in to pit road. Sage Karam will follow. Pit stops underway here at Road America. The DMLC Racing Channel Grand Prix of Road America presented by Sam Maxwell Customs. Here's Otis in. Here comes Little Train in fourth. Little train is in. I think we're going to see the whole field pit this lap yet. Yep. I think you're absolutely right. Now, technically, there is still 16 to go. They've gone 15. And that pace lap was heavy fuel saving. So, it's going to be real close. <laughs> and, and, and it's not like you get a lot of pit road here. Uh, by the time that you stop and get your fuel, you're so far down pit road. You're going to fill up and then be, like, hammered down right away. So Here's something it very is interesting. Dean Mall 
stays out. Mardi Gras out? Mardi Gras has made the fuel number work. Well, he did this well, somewhere else earlier well, this year, too. Now, before we proclaim that he's made the fuel number work, let's make sure he can get four miles back around the track. <laughs> well, you got a couple downhills here. Like, you know, I can make it work. How's, how, how hard does your left foot push the clutch in if you're Mardi Gras? Let's see here. I th now, is Dean? I think Dean is the only driver that stayed out. Am I? Am I wrong on uh, that? Dean and Chris Lanini. Dean, Dean and Chris Lanini. Sounds like a, a band from the seventies. Dean, Dean and Chris. Dean and Lanini. Dean and Lanini. Dean and Chris. It'd be, be like that'd be a soulful band. So this is going to be ultra interesting to watch. I think Lenini, he's, he's really trying to make that stretch. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, see, now, and so here's the part where uh, I question this type of one-stop deal, Yaz, because uh, if if you've got to slow down to the point where, let's say, this lap is nine or ten seconds slower, it, 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 what, I, what I, have you gained? Is, well, and here's something very interesting. Dean has been able to keep Sage at bay. Correct. Came out, so I mean, he's Dean has found a way to oh. make it work, be fast. I think now he's getting here. Out we of go. Way. Sage goes by. All right, now let's watch this here, Amjad. But I mean, if that's the end of the Dean race, get up the hill. Let's see if Dean can get up the hill. Oh, he's full power. That thing, that thing is singing. Now does he's he make there? It? Oh, well, he's not out of harm's way yet. Look at this. Impressive what field a run by Mardi, Mardi Gras. Gras. He did this at another road course earlier this year where the fuel number was, was real tight. Was he one of the was he one of the I two think, at Emola that stretched it? I believe it? you're right. I believe I you're right. I'm gonna go look that yes. up. Either that or Sebring for some reason. Chris Lanini you see on the track. Just he's just trying to find a spot to hide right now. It's David Altman, who's on the two stop strategy, goes by, but Chris did make it back to pit road. Dean taking all the imperial gallons of fuel that he can take, and he's it away. I was I was in points. Let me go pull up race results here. Emila, uh, eh, no, it wasn't Emila for Dean. Dean was twelfth at Emila, lap down. I do remember uh, Travis Jaegerlener was able to make the number at Emila, and that surprised the daylight and stole a third place because of it. But. Uh, he did not do so here, I don't believe. So, go check Sebring for you here, Yaz. There was somewhere that he yeah, stretched it out longer than a couple of others. And Chris Lanini is now off of pit road. This is the battle for sixth. That is JP Winchettle, the 56 car, black and red. And Chris Reagan, you're on board with the newcomer to the Lionheart Retro Series, presented by Butt Kicker. And I tell you what, Mardi Gras is, he's not buried too deep either. Like He's right behind Scott Holmes for 10th. So if Dean can get into the top 10 and everybody else runs into some problems. It's, it's not a race-winning move. I, he, the delta is too far. Right. But, but is that a fourth competitive. place move? Oh, probably. I bet you that would steal. That would probably steal third or fourth away. Well, I mean, they would actually, I mean, if he wanted to fight it, he would go, he would have been finished second. Because remember, uh, he was able to hold Sage Care, who was P2. That was an aggressive move right there. I like that. Uh, fire it out of Mardi Gras here tonight. Sage, Sage is, Sage is right in the window on that Delta right now. Here's Windshittle. Reagan got him. So Chris Reagan back around JP. Let's take a look. Ooh. Oh, no. oh, no. Hang on to it, buddy. Yee-haw. The load of 79 also does not make a good lawnmower. JP went uh, milk milk cow ride in there. Cow tipping. Cow tipping. Well, I, I was trying to make some sort of some sort of milk and cheese joke, but I realized right. that it wasn't going to work. Was, well, it was strained too much. Yeah. But I'm... And Mardi Gras trying to separate from Holmes a little bit. I think Richie Hearn, you see in the background, has been lapped. 
has had an adventurous race, to say the least. Well, how about that camera shot? Love it. I love, I love the Dougie Beard camera shots of Turn 5 here at Road America. They are just so cool. You see the cars kind of emerge coming down the hill from behind the trees or from under the bridge. Well, and, and some people, you know, you look at the, at the camera side of things, or you, you look at the way that an artist works in oils or, or watercolors. That's his medium to make that work. Dougie works in camera angles. Dougie makes it work, and it's, it's, it's so nice uh, from our side because the cameras look phenomenal. There's mine right now for the kink. Uh, just that shot where you really see the cars come in, yaw, and have to make that corner, and there you see him screaming out. Boy, J.P. Winchettle just had a uh, hold my beer moment in Canada. So it's been an adventurous lap, to say the least, for J.P. Here's another look. This was uh, exciting, to say the least. This is him coming down. He got some wing damage up there. Yeah, he it's does. Like angle looking weird. He does have some front wing damage for sure. But watch this. Oh my. Oh no. Oh, what a save. Uh, Mark Cohn on pit road. For a, a splash of fuel. Boy, what does that tell you? Hmm. If Mark Cohn is already, like, not happening, guys. I mean, I, I see the, the play here, though. If you, if you really think about it, if you know you're not going to make what's the point in running it all right. the way to the end of the stint to know you're not going to make it? If you right. if you realize that early on the race, yeah, come on down, get a splash of fuel. I mean, he probably only took a gallon or so, an Imperial gallon. Um... And now he's off and away, so I'll be curious to see where Mark cycles out in this. And and up front, Alex Saunders has kind of had this race all to himself for the first 19 laps of this event coming to 20. He, there's a car in the rear view mirror that's starting to get a little bit bigger as we look down this camera shot. There you see it right there, that orange and purple and white machine of Sage Karam very slowly winding in the leader. Six tenths of a second the last time. They crossed the stripe was how much Sage chunked off, and there's a look at it. Every lap for the last four laps, Sage has taken a big chunk off. 1.1, that was on the pit lap, so Sage significantly better on the Delta. And then a half second, two tenths, and almost six tenths of a second. The next three laps. Do you, do you wonder maybe if Alex is trying to get the fuel saving out of the way now, and Sage's thoughts are, I can't make it, so let me try to push Alex out? It's, I, there's both strategies at play. You know, I, I, I can see it going either way. Sage, we know, is good on the fuel, uh, making the fuel number one. So, it, I mean, unless he, I mean, he probably knows something a lot of us don't. I mean, look at his success on the road courses, obviously. So it's it, it's it's just really fun to see this balancing act of speed and performance while still trying to sip as little fuel as possible. On board with Sage uh -oh. Karen. Uh-oh. I heard Dustin an uh-oh. Wardlow, the candy man, has uh, received throughput fell to unacceptable levels. Oh, no. We did lose Dustin. Just happened. I saw his, his, his car number go yellow on my screen, and I was hoping it was going to come back like the first time, but he will join uh, Chad Dalton, Mike Belair, David Clymer, uh, and, and Eric Block with... Yeah, George Anzaldo, Paul Cohen, uh, all have for drivers who have uh, unfortunately left us earlier than they probably anticipated. Man, that is brutal for Dustin. It's going to fall all the way down to 22nd. And for a driver who I know he felt so confident coming into this year with this race car, felt like this was his chance to win a Lionheart championship with Saunders and Block are not running as much. Not that you want to do it against any lesser competition. And Ryan Otis came back, so there's plenty of quality talent here. But I know that Dustin really felt like he was one of the two or three favorites. And I know a lot of other people felt that way as well. Things have just not worked out for him in this series so far this year. Really in IndyCar either. 
there's been some uh, there's been some self-inflicted moments, but there's also been computer issues, and there's been a whole lot of just in the wrong spot at the wrong time. And uh, unfortunately, in racing, you can't control what you can't control, right? Just like life. And Dustin mm -hmm. Wardlow, another example of it here. Receive throughput. Two words simulation race car drivers hate to hear. Meanwhile, Sage Karam is like, knock, knock. Mm -hmm. 1.9 and counting. Yep. Is closing little by little. Lap 21. So we're coming up on 10 to go. As these cars scream down the final section and into... Well, and true with the trees there and the fences, I mean, there is... I've been told it, from people that have been there and stood in that corner, it is a thundering noise uh, as the cars come down that because the way that the, the track slopes down, it it focuses all that sound right at you uh, if you're standing on the on the back side of the fence there by Canada Corp. Up the long hill, look at this camera angle. Oof, there they go. Down the front stretch, Alex Saunders maintaining a little bit of an advantage this but it's it sage is eating into it a 54 56 for alex and a 54 23 for sage so little by little that car in the rear view mirror for alex is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and then before you know it you're going to hear car inside or car outside sage is having to work in this one there's no denying that one. Qualified third. Got that great jump on the start of the race. Oh boy, Sage, hang <laughs> on to it, buddy. And here's your uh, three, two stop all the way strategy for David Altman, by the way. He just announced he is coming into pit. Yep. So David Altman, who decided right away, I'm going two stops. I'm going to split them up equally, is uh, going to pit as he comes around. And he's going to fall is. out behind Ron Hacker. Hopefully, or, or for his sake, he's hoping he can get out in front of uh, Rigney Cones, uh, Paul Jenkins, because that's just a knot of cars. And you try, you don't want to end up in a knot of cars. They're all working up the hill. He is rolling. So this is going to be real interesting going off into turn one. Quick stop for Altman. See that black and yellow, that black and yellow car, just gonna get out in front of all of that. Watching the gaps at the line between our front two. <laughs> Another tenth and a half to Sage that time. I just. As these laps are winding down, he's just able to find this extra gear and, and just keep applying that pressure. But then at the same time, we know how tight that number is on fuel. So, it, you know, is Saunders saving just enough that he needs to save? Does Is Sage burning too much? I mean... There's only nine laps to go now. Nine, nine laps at Road America is, is quite a bit of time. So, but we are—I mean, we, we are closer to the end of it than we were at the beginning. Uh, so, <laughs> this is where it's going to boil down to. It's a Murrayism right there. Sam, that is uh, an Sam accurate Ryman. statement. Accurate statement. We are closer to the finish than we were at the beginning. Chris Reagan on pit road. You see some left wing damage for Chris. Uh, has had a uh, nice debut so far. Here in the Lionheart Retro Series, presented by Butt Kicker. Qualified fifth, has run around at the top ten for the entire event. Pretty solid, uh, pretty solid debut. You know, when you, you start your first race in a new league, you, you don't want to be the guy to wreck somebody. You just kind of want to show up, do your job, and get, get to the end of it. So, uh, and, and he has. He's just been doing real good. So. I always took the opposite approach. I, I wanted to make a loud statement. They're going to know I was here. I'm either going to win it or I'm going to send it. <laughs> it's worked so far. Hey, this is the uh, DMLC Racing Channel Grand Prix of Road America, presented by Sam Maxwell Customs. 
part of the Lionheart Retro Series presented by Butt Kick. I want to thank everybody out there on iRacing Esports Network following along on the live stream on YouTube. And, you know, for nearly a decade, Sam Maxwell Customs has taken pride in customizing racing wheels for the sim racing enthusiast. Each order built with precision and craftsmanship, ensuring the highest quality in sim racing wheels and accessory. A steering wheel is the primary interface for sim drivers. So wouldn't you want the best? You can get yours today at sammaxwellcustoms.com. On board the Sam Maxwell Customs camera there that you were looking at with one Ryan Otis, and here's a battle for the lead. And guess what? Sage Karam. If he said knock knock, Alex is saying go away. <laughs> so Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. But now, was, but we got somebody who's going to be on pit road here. Yeah, I, I thought I heard that too. I'm just kind of looking through the gaggle of cars here. There's a big weave down the front stretch there, too. I don't know if it was JP calling it and no. then not being able to get in. He's there. Uh, carry on. I'm just kind of, I keep my eye at the, the entry point to pit I'm road. I'm just glad that you heard it. Anybody won't like know. I'm just, you know, I'm not the only one who heard it. You know, that's good. Well, I mean, of all the voices in my head, that was the, that was the nicest one. I hear voices all the time. Frank Beeser. Going once, going Spin twice. There at the end of turn 14. Oh, a little bit of front end damage on that 32 that's, machine. That's not going to end well. Oh, gosh. Oh, the full oh, wheel and drift. Don't chase it, Frank. <laughs> and, Don't chase and it. It's, it's it's so sickening from the driver's cockpit because it's just that slow antagonizing spin. Oh, Scott Holmes spinning off as well. Just happened to be, just happened to be watching that battle there, and, and Holmes looped it right after the Corvette bridge. Boy, and Holmes sets and he backs it into the tire okay. barrier. And you can you can get away with front wing damage here. Rear wing is going to hurt a lot. Mm -hmm. And that rear wing is crumpled up a little bit. You got my bridge is confused. I'm at the speed build bridge. Well, you know, it's tomatoes, tomatoes. You know, one is rots and one is American horsepower. That's all schematics, yes. All right, copy. Hey, here's JP. So it was JP last last time, and he wasn't able to get in. Uh, and he yeah. just announced it again. So he's, he's got it rolled down this time. Back up to the lead. Alex Saunders has led every lap of this race so far. Uh, he's, he's had a commanding pace. I mean, this is the Saunders that we remember from last season. Just on these roads, just that fast, consistent lap times, just that he would just scoot away from you. You didn't feel like he was that much faster, but he would just move away from you every single corner. And it just, you throw everything at it and you still watch him, you know, as the run progresses, gain two, three, four, five tenths, and then it's just, then that purple car was just gone. JP Winchittle is out. And he will slot in right now in the 12th position. We still have how many cars are still on the lead lap here? Uh, 19. Everybody but Beeser, who is still running, is also on the lead lap. I'm not sure Beeser. I didn't. Did Beeser make it back out after that incident? He's showing. Uh, uh, I still know he, ju he just manually disconnected. So everybody yeah. who's still running is on the lead lap. How about that? Sage Paulson just. Paulson and Adam Young are going under the Corvette bridge. And here come. Boy, I tell you what. There's something to keep an eye on. Here come Saunders and Karam under Corvette now. Paulson and Young, which is a battle for position, are in seven right now. They are into turn eight, and guess who's already out of seven? Alex Saunders and Sage Carroll. Yeah, this is uh, 
this is gonna get very interesting as as we we get more down towards the the conclusion of this event. Had a lot of action in this one. A lot of passing so far. Many incidents that will be uh, critical to the point standings. Ryan Otis just comfortably hanging out in the third spot. David Clymer was out in a lap one wreck. Paul Jenkins has had a quiet, inauspicious race uh, and is up to 15th. Dustin Wardlow with internet connection issues. Chris Lanini trying to play fuel strategy right now in 16th. Travis Yeager Leonard has quietly, and I mean quietly, worked his way up to ninth, and then Chad Dalton with a wreck. Marty Gramal, that's the most interesting one of all. He is in the fifth position with an extra lap of fuel. So Marty Gras has been could, doing some work. I would say he would be able to probably get to third if it, you know, if it were if that worked out the same way. I think he could get up to third. Uh, Jaegerliner also being our hard charger started 19th up to ninth. Just steady progress out How about of the driver. Finian, of that just in front of Travis, is uh, up to eighth from a 16th starting spot. But let's not forget, Finian was sideways before turn one. Oh, yes. Finian got run over going into the first corner when uh, Ron Hacker kind of slowed down a little bit earlier than everybody expected. And David Clymer came piling in there. Couldn't get to the brakes hard enough. And Finian has rebounded up to eighth so far. So I bet if you would have told Finian, hey, with the five and a half laps to go, you would be an eighth and still have uh, plenty of opportunity to improve on that, you would have been happy about it. Here is a pass for the ninth spot. Chris Reagan just got around Travis Yeagerland. Now, remember, Chris has made two pit stops already. So, Yeah, I mean, that's... And See why that was... That was that was a lot more easier than I think they were anticipating. Mark Cohn in 7th, Chris Reagan in ninth, J.P. Winchittle in 12th, and David Altman in 13th have all already stopped for a second time and are good to go. Everybody else is a question mark, if, with the exception, we believe, of Dean Maul and Chris Lanini. And let me tell you, if Dean and Chris end up being a question mark, everybody else is going to run out of field. Oh, Sage had a moment coming up at the top I'm coming out of Thunder Valley. The car, I think he caught a bump, and the car jumped a little bit, and probably sent uh, you know set that heart rate up a couple more beats per. Minute. And those two are firmly in the wake of the lapped cars, and there are four of them ahead. That's James Paulson and Adam Young in a battle for 18th that are nose to tail, and then in front of them, Mike Rigney is trying to chase down Chris Lanini. We're going to stay with the battle for the lead until the Ooh. end of this one, barring an incident somewhere on track. And Adam Young, look at that. Adam says 19 is not that important. Let me get out of the way. Yeah, this this is not my battle. I'm going to get right out of the way. Now, Paulson, I think Paulson's close enough. I mean, you get in the blue flag message from the game at this point. This is a bad spot for Paulson, though, because he's, he's going to be in Saunders' way pretty much. Oh, it's big spot to move what well that's convenient yeah and you know the racing the racing gods just gave adam young that spot back they did we, <laughs> sure I mean, did with plenty of breathing space by the way with three yeah. and a half laps to go paulson's not chasing adam back down if he did that'd be a great comeback it would it would so now that's two of the four cleared out and and lanini and rigney have kind of opened up a little bit i, I don't know if rigney had an issue somewhere on this lap, but he was closing in on Chris, and that gap has opened. So now that'll kind of clear things out for Sage and Saunders. As we're coming down to three and some change left in this. A little bit of dust coming off the back of that number three machine up through Thunder Valley around turn 14, down or kind of up the up the main straight instead of uh, down the front stretch, up the front stretch here. Sage at six tenths of a second back is close enough to get a draft. And you can see it chopping away from six I wonder... tenths down to five tenths, down to 45 hundredths as they head into turn one all the way down to 43 hundredths of a second. I... That draft is worth two tenths on the front straightaway, yes. It absolutely is. And now, Jason, what I'm wondering 
is I'm wondering if, if Sage has caught a little bit of that wake and it's making it that much harder to try to make that move. Because, I mean, we watched him run down Alex Saunders. Absolutely run him down. And now he's here, and it's it's either a coy move to try to save some fuel, or maybe he's feeling a little bit of that arrow effect as uh, it was someone that got out of the way there. Or maybe Alex was in fuel-saving mode and let Sage get close and thinks he can keep him at bay. Who knows? Although well, I don't know that Alex would have let him get this close. That's awfully close. Chris Lini also getting out of the way. So all four lap cars doing a nice job. It was Mike Rigney was the black car they went around. And now Sage and Alex can pretty much race it out to the end. Two and a half laps to go. The next lap car is Paul Jenkins. He's coming out of the carousel now. He has Ryan Corns in front of him. I think the leaders will maybe catch them on the last lap. Uh, it might. <laughs> you know, as if that last lap needs any more extra ripping. Right. Coming around two laps remaining through Canada. Thirteen under the Kohler Bridge. Fourteen up the hill. And across the start finish line. Two laps to go. Eight miles. And Sage gets within 39 hundredths on the front straightaway that time. So he made up a little bit of ground. Now here's something worth noticing. The delta back to Ryan Otis is 26 seconds. So if Sage or if Alex Saunders have a bobble, that's going to play right into Otis's hands. So I'm not going to say count him out of it just yet. By the way, look at how close everybody is from sixth on back. Scott Holmes in sixth to Travis Jagerlander in tenth are within ten seconds with varying pit strategies in there as well. It's just all sorts of ripples for this race. It's, it's really exciting. Coming down the backside of the track and towards the carousel. Here's the left, turn seven. Speedville. And the carousel. I'm wondering if Sage is trying to save fuel to get to the end of this race. Off of 10, towards the kink. The kink is 11, should be flat open here. And Sage not really gaining. In fact, you can hear him pedaling if you ride on board with him, kind of. Maybe just trying to push Saunders out. We're set up for a move on the last lap. We're coming down to it, Jason. I mean, there, there, nobody there's... else is pit yet either. No, I would not want to run out of gas here. It's a four mile lap. I mean, you, you they have gone by the end of pit road. So here's where it is. White flag, one lap, four miles and some change to determine who is going to win. The DMLC Racing Channel Grand Prix of Road America, presented by Sam Maxwell Customs. Will it be Alex Saunders? He has led the first 30 laps from the pole. Or will it be Sage Karam? Both of them bobbling off at the end of turn three, technically, down there. Down this back stretch underneath the Sargento Bridge. I think Sage, he's just committed to riding to try to make that fuel number work. Boy, down to the bottom of this corner, out. shows the nose. And here come some lap cars side by side in front of them through Corvette. Told you that last lap was going to get interesting. That's Ryan Corns and Paul Jenkins in four position. And remember, Jenkins is third in points. Oh, that Whoa, was a close baby. move. Corns got out of the way. Oh. Will Paul do the same? The, boy, the carousel, that's a tough spot to be tucked up if you're Alex Saunders here this could get dangerous everybody's everybody's getting the arrow wash there coming through the kink what does Sage have left he's only got a couple more opportunities to try to get up there and get around Saunders and Jenkins is not moving over look at this now he does will he let them both go 
Oh, he takes Sage. Oh, Corn no! Sage. Turn Sage. And here comes Corns into it as well. Saunders up the hill through the final corner. Alex Saunders pulls through the gears and he could practically coast home from here. Alex Saunders for the second time in 2019 is a winner in the Lion Art Retro Series presented by Butt Kicker. Sage Karam is coasting. Is he out of fuel? He's Sage out of is fuel. out of fuel. He doesn't even have the momentum to get up the hill. Unbelievable. Where's Ryan Otis? He's coming around the final corner right now, seizing the opportunity. Ryan Otis will steal a podium, or steal second place, I should say. And Little Train is going to steal a podium. Sage has... Oh! So, oh Kalisto is out, out of fuel. Chaos right. on the final Here lap. Here comes Mardi Gras. Can he do it? Mardi Gras into Canada. Kalisto's car is still kind of on and off the throttle. Through the final corner, it bobbles. 70, he's got, he's got enough to get on the gas. Up to 90 and it cuts out. It cuts oh. out. Here comes Little Train and here comes Mardi Gras. They're going to drag race to the line except for only one of them's on the throttle. Mardi Gras under the bridge. Is he going to get there at the stripe? No. Little oh. Train steals a podium. Battle Go for back. seventh. Scott Cone Holmes. And Holmes and Finian. I think that's actually even an extra spot because what? of... Sage being out of fuel. Here they come across. Mark Cohn to fifth. Holmes to sixth. Holmes out of gas. Oh, did Finian get him? No. No. <laughs> Scott Holmes held on. Wow. All right, let's go back and take a look at the contact heard around the state of Wisconsin. Sage, Sage. Karam. Oh, Paul Jenkins. Paul moved over, but he, he just needed he needed to be on the brakes more. Situational awareness there. He moved over, but he needed to have that thing way woed up. There was nothing on the line. And Sage, look at this. Saunders around the outside, and Sage comes in and expects Jenkins not to be there, and Paul is still there, and Sage turns across. And you can't really blame Sage for that. Let's go on board with Sage. Oh, that is brutal. And then, because you, you use all the extra fuel to get turned around here. Now, I'm not sure, based on where Sage ran out, if he was going to have enough to get up the hill, Brian. Certainly not enough, I don't think, to out-drag race Saunders. Like that, I think that ship, we now know, would have sailed. But he had enough, for sure, I think, to get him up the hill and to the stripe. Worst case is yeah. And instead, I think it would have sputtered. It probably would have sputtered at the at the bottom of that of that front stretch right there. And it would have been a drag race with Otis and he. And instead, Sage Karam does not complete the last lap. Retires from the race at the bottom of the hill at pit entrance and finishes in thirteenth. What a race at Road America! We hope you hung around with us. Stick around a few more minutes. We'll take a break and then we'll hear from the podium. Crazy night here in the retro series.
The Sim Pit is an entertainment channel dedicated to the world of simulated motorsports. The Sim Pit is a leader in providing the sim racing community with news, reviews, interviews, DIY pieces, and instructional videos to make sim racing a better experience for all. Check us out at thesimpit.com or go to YouTube and just search for The Sim Pit. Welcome back to the DMLC Racing Channel Grand Prix of Road America, presented by Sam Maxwell Customs, part of the Lionheart Retro Series, presented by Butt Kicker. And this is the post race show. And because our good friends at Lionheart kick butt at this old sponsorship deal, guess what? It has a sponsor too Plasma Tracks. Plasma Dash Tracks. The dash is really important there. Plasma Dash Tracks.com, Victory Lane, post race show you know our good friends at plasma tracks they have just like one of the coolest products in the world so if you're struggling to find something for that person that has everything go to plasma-tracks.com not only do they produce original racetrack wall art we're not talking about like paintings here and stuff we're talking about like really really cool like pieces of material crafted into the shape of your favorite racetrack plus motorsports trophies home decor fabrication also available wards cannot describe the uniqueness of this product. The only way to fully appreciate the artwork is to see it for yourself, but we warn one visit. The next thing you know, you're gonna be convincing your spouse that you need like an entire household full of plasma track wall art hanging. See it all, plasma-tracks.com. Promo code LRS2019 gets you 25% off your order. What a finish here at Road America. Yes, runs through the top 10. Alexander's leading it from flag to flag with all sorts of different challenges tossed at him. With Ryan Otis, uh, kind of get an unlikely second place, but hey, you know, making that fuel number work after the uh, kind of what happened down there in Canada corner. Lionel Kalisto rounding out our podium. We got all three of them lined up that we're going to talk to. Dean Maul snaking away a fourth place finish. Highest of the, uh, well, not necessarily highest, of the uh, of the one stopper, but he definitely made it work the, the best to his advantage. Mark Cohn rounding out the top five in the highest of the two stopper uh, of the night. Scott Holmes in six with Finian Ducana in seventh, eighth to Chris Reagan, the new guy, and Travis Yeager liner ninth with JP Winchittle rounding out your top ten. David Altman came home in eleventh, managed to salvage a pretty solid points night, all things considered. I think for David, Ron Hacker, final car in the lead lap. In 12th, Sage Karam. All of that effort to run down Alex, all for naught as he finishes 13th. One lap down, couldn't get back to the stripe on the last lap. Ryan Corns, who also uh, was involved in that Canada corner incident on the last lap, ends up 14th. Chris Lanini, Adam Young. Boy, I missed what happened to Chris there. He has uh, Adam Young, James Paulson, Mike Rigney, Paul Jenkins down there in 19th. Uh, and a whole lot more pain going on for Paul than just 19th. And Frank Beeser rounded out your top 20. In Blackjack 21st, Candyman Dustin Wardlow after some network connection issues bit him. Richie Hearn finishing 22nd with Chad Dalton 23rd. Mike Bellar in 24th with George Anzaldo 25th, 26th to David Clymer and Eric Block. Unfortunately, dead last on the night in 27th. But 
someone who is not dead last, Jason, uh, is the one and only Alex Saunders. And you've got him in victory lane. Alex Saunders. Boy, uh, you just like to pop in here and there and uh, make spectacular appearances. Win number two on the season for you. Quite a crazy race. Uh, you were pretty much in cruise control, it seemed like, the whole race. And then all of a sudden, Sage Karam came barreling down. How much were you saving fuel on that final run out? A lot. Almost the whole thing. <laughs> um, had to save a little bit on the on the first stint, too, because of the full pace lap. So, uh, you know, it's, it's nerve-wracking keeping an eye on the track and an eye on the fuel box and an eye on the relative. It just uh, takes a lot of attention. How concerned were you when you looked up in your mirror and saw that Sage had barreled down on you and spent those last five laps really just tucked up behind you? How concerned were you that he had found a way to maybe make it to the end and push you out? I was, I was really concerned. I was having flashbacks to last year when uh, Adam was able to save fuel constantly all the time, and I had no idea how. Um, I knew going into the race what I was going to have to do to make it to the end, and um, when he, when he caught up, especially when he was in the draft and I knew he could save some extra fuel that way, I was, uh, I was getting worried those last few laps. Well, it was a super exciting final lap. <laughs> uh, it was probably a little less exciting for you because it all happened in your rearview mirror, but, uh, walk us through the, the final run down, uh, through the last, uh, group of straights there and Thunder Valley into Canada corner. And what your take was on the situation as you guys sailed off into the final couple corners? Um, yeah, I, I think by the last lap, I knew I had enough fuel saved that I was I was full on it on the last lap. But then we caught we caught the lap cars. I think I think we had caught a couple um, maybe coming out of seven or something that I had to dodge around that may have been the lap before. Um, and then yeah, coming up on on Paul through through Thunder Valley because you're you know the the track isn't straight there. You're going left and right. Um, it, it's kind of hard to, hard to know which way to zig, which way to zag. Um, I know Paul came over, over voice. He tried to say something, but honestly, uh, over the, the engines and the, and the focus and the red mist, I didn't really hear what he said. So, um, you know, just kind of tried to, to stick my nose where it would be obvious which way I was going to go and, and, and hope for the best. And, you know, I sailed it in there pretty good. Um, you know, I knew, I knew I had cleared him before the, the corner and then I, I saw, you know, in the rear view, all the, the chaos breaking out, which, you know, I, I hate it. Cause me and me and Sage had a great run, but you know, at the same time, these, these guys, when you, you catch them, especially when they're, they're racing with somebody that's right there for position, everybody's got their own race going on. So it's just kind of, kind of one of those deals. So I don't know how aware you are with what worked out after that, but Sage ended up out of fuel. Uh, and couldn't get the thing up the hill. So uh, that was a tough break for Sage there. But uh, none of that matters to you because you pick up the win, number two on the year. How much more can we expect to see you uh, in the Retro Series this year? Uh, I should be should be in from here on out. Um, schedule cleared up. I had that, that big block of races that I missed, and now we just got the uh, the few run into the run into the finish. It feels, feels great to get a good one after, you know, I did, did Indy and Iowa and, and ended up with, with crumpled cars. So getting a, getting a good result and getting back in the swing of things feels great. Well, congratulations. You know, we love having you back here, Alex and uh, great run for you tonight. Wire to wire. It was vintage Alex Saunders and there's three more road course races coming up before the season finale at auto club for you to uh, continue to stake your dominance. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I can I can get lucky, and and Sage won't have as much time to to practice. Because man, that that guy is fast, and uh, and Ryan too. We had a we had a, some good battles going during the week, and uh, um, Sandman too. If he's back for these last ones, he's he's been real strong. So I'm really looking forward to it. Alex Saunders, always humble, but always fast, picks up the win here at Road America, second place, and uh, what turned out to be. Just a stellar points night, Brian. Ryan Otis. Ryan uh, hey. finishing. Hey, 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 finishing second. Uh, what kind of rant do you mind when uh, I'm assuming that when you saw the relative and Sage uh, was coming back to you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was saving really hard just the entire second stint. And, uh, I didn't really, I didn't realize there'd been some sort of incident. I didn't really know what had happened. I just saw that he was 
rolling to a stop going up the hill. So I knew he ran out. Um, so I, you know, I felt like I was kind of the third, third best driver putting in a third place drive and just sort of lucked into second. Well, I mean, and, and luck is really not, uh, not the way to describe your season so far. You've been a very statistically, probably one of the best seasons in in Lion history from a statistics standpoint, all of your competitors in the points had bad nights. I mean, and here you go finishing and capitalizing second. So, I mean, we're getting down towards the end of the season. Are you kind of letting yourself have those thoughts of, of the championship yet, or are you still business as usual week in and week out? Uh, well, I certainly wasn't in this race. Um, you know, I kind of made a little mistake early on and tried to save a little at the wrong time. And uh, Sage just came barreling up on me and I knew where he was going to try to pass. And I was like, man, you can you, you can have this. We'll just we'll just try not to touch and uh, and uh, and I'll, I'll just try to play it safe here. Uh, but uh, so that 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 worked out OK. Uh, but yeah, from here on out, I I feel like if I can just put in some, you know, some decent top fives or top tens, then uh, then I'll be in pretty good shape. So you're pretty, you know, more than pretty good shape. But uh, uh, well, just 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 the modesty there is 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 impeccable. Uh, as we head down the road here, I mean, uh, what's kind of I guess what's the approach? I mean, you talk about putting in good clean efforts. I mean, how does that, from from a driver mentality standpoint, how do you quell the red mist and maybe kind of have your have, have yourself have the situational awareness? Um, well, I kind of felt like maybe I eased up a little bit too much here, like in qualifying, because I made a little mistake and dipped a tire, and so I didn't have a good lap and ended up sort of playing it safe. Um, I, you know, I really like the road courses, and so I don't, uh, you know, unless something super bad happens, you know, in the next race or something, I think from there on out, I think I'm just going to kind of go for it. Um, you know, it's kind of, I've, I've been sort of trying to be smart and play it safe here and there, but, um, you know, if it, if it looks like I'm, uh, you know, I'm in good shape points wise, then I think, uh, I think just have some fun and hang it out a little and take some chances uh, on the track and see if I can get a, uh, See if I can get a road course uh, pull away from Saunders because he's just been crazy fast and Sage is crazy fast. So, uh, yeah, there's no there's no gimmies. Absolutely. Hey, I mean, any uh, any other shout outs you want to make before we uh, before we uh, part ways this evening? Uh, no, nah, just you know, I got to thank the the admins and everybody. Uh, you know, uh, George and everybody who puts in so much time uh, to get this league running. Uh, you know, I saw the schedule came out for next year, and I'm super excited for it. Uh, there'll be a few more road courses, so I'm I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah, I'm I'm just uh, I'm just grateful for all the work they put in. Sounds good. We will catch you on down the road, Ryan, and uh, have yourself a great night. Congratulations on the second. Yeah, thanks, guys. Ryan Otis, big points night, points leader, uh, currently by 166 points over David Clymer, and the gap is 200 back to fourth, and Dustin Wardlow. Here's somebody who is a quietly creeping their way back up in the points, made a jump four more spots up to 17th after missing a few races earlier in the year and picked up his third top five of the year. Lionel Calisto, a great run for you, Lionel. Uh, crazy finish, though. Um, would like tell me right now are you like soaking your feet from like the barney rubble experience of like trying to push the thing up the hill there at the end or like how did you get to how did you get to the stripe you were out of fuel so early honestly i don't know i was sputtering on the last corner and i was surprised i got over the hill uh i i didn't think i was gonna finish third honestly i thought i was just gonna finish fourth and or finish fifth i thought i was gonna get passed up on the line uh, I guess it was just luck in the end. I guess sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, the way this season's going, I had a lot of bad luck. <laughs> Brian and I had talked about that, that, um, you know, you were, you were one of the drivers at the start of the year that I think everybody said, hey, like, look out. He's going to run the retro series. And then things just kind of haven't really broken your way. But coming on strong here of late, uh, you picked up a third place today after starting in six, able to make some passes. Somehow made the fuel work. Uh, what what what's it like? Uh, what, what's the feeling in your camp right now as we head into the last couple of races here and and you start to pick up some momentum? 
Uh, it was pretty satisfying. Honestly, like I'm really stoked. I wasn't expecting to finish in the podium. Honestly, I mean, this week practicing, I was just struggling. I just can't figure the car out. And I, I guess I just, I just was just doing, hitting my marks, I guess, just be trying to be consistent. I know I wasn't fast enough to first or second. I thought I was going to finish around 10th or 11th. Uh, hopefully the next couple of races I'll get – couple good finish and try to get make my way up into the standings as best as i can this uh there's there's four races left in the season i believe and three of them are uh road courses here with uh canadian motorsports park at the end of the year laguna seca but up next uh sonoma in the retro car it's kind of like a unique combination how you feel about sonoma in this thing uh, looking forward to it. Uh, I do like Sonoma. Uh, I mean, I haven't raced her with the L79, so, I mean, it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Well, we look forward to that race as well, and a great run tonight. It was fun to watch you uh, come through the field there, and it was really fun to watch you uh, jump out of the car, turn around, and start blowing out the back, trying to push it up the hill like a sailboat there. That was a, I, made, I made for an interesting last uh, run up to the stripe there. Nice run. Yeah, thank you, guys. Hey, thanks for broadcasting the race. Lionel Calisto comes home in the third position. Uh, Amjad, are we, uh, are, we, are we ducking out or are we hanging around? I'm, wait, I'm waiting on Amjad to make the call here. Yeah, why not? Why not, Amjad? Amjad says if we want to do the last one, why not? Brian. He, it is it is a presenting guy of the race. He, he so. did he did sponsor the race. Yes. He this is the man who is responsible for me having to constantly stare at the notes to make sure that I did not mess up the name <laughs> of the race because man, it was a mouthful. Brian, why don't you talk to our uh, our good friend and teammate Marco? Mark uh Tell us about your night, man. Go and or you decided with a two stop strategy. Well, first off, I gotta say, top five on a row course. Yes, I'm so freaking happy right now. I just I suck so much at saving fuel, and I felt like <laughs> if I'm gonna get a good finish, I would just have to push the living, you know what, out of this thing. So <laughs> I, love, I love the honesty. Of I just I suck everything I deal. could. I just did everything I could, hoped it would stick. I still kind of overdrove it a bit with a bit too much fuel, but somehow I cranked that out. This is probably one of the toughest drives I've had, period, but one of the most satisfying runs I've ever had in online racing. And that's thanks to all these wonderful people at Lionheart that make it so tough but so satisfying. I mean, you know, you came off a of pit road. It looked like you were going to kind of fall in line with everybody uh, to, to try to make the one stop. And then you just peeled off and topped it off with gas. I mean, that you realized, you know what, I, I have to push and I have to attack. And, and that was your kind of altering move of the race. I just had a gut feeling that there might be a few more that we're going to have to pit. So if that was the case, I was just going to have to just try and undercut them. And then that somehow just ended up working. And I was like, yes, I'm getting some positions here. And then at the end, Scott Holmes drove me so clean. I barely got to him. He drove so hard, even with that broken rear wing. I have to give him credit because he had a heck of a run as well to get six. Oh my God. I mean, you know, and that, yeah, you know, top five on the, you know, anytime you got your, your sponsor, basically you, uh, on the series or on the race and you finish top five, that's not a bad way to be. Can't complain at all. And I also have to thank, of course, Sam Maxwell Customs, Harpoon Design. I've now got another watch sponsor, Crystal Times, some of the best watch parts you can think of. Huge shout out to them for coming on board. And, of course, my team's NLR Overtake everyone i do i can't say enough oh and of course sim lab i can't forget anyone i'm just so happy right now i'm even almost forgetting sponsors <laughs> he, he he forgot his indycar team yeah should we, should yeah, we keep him around oh and lpm yeah, yeah. sorry guys lpm <laughs> you guys have done so much for me behind the scenes i can't say enough about it. we're just giving you a hard time mark 
I gotta have fun with it. Yazik was a uh, Yazik was especially uh, thrilled that you managed to land another watch sponsor because it keeps his uh, nickname for you intact. Mm-hmm. I love it, guys. Can't say enough about being the watchman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's Mark Cohn. Uh, he came home well, with fifth place tonight for Mark Cohn. Great run for uh, Mark to slide up there into the top five. Yaz, uh, it was a fun night, huh? Heck yeah, it was a good night. That's a, that's your final thoughts? Heck yeah, it was a good night. That was Man. a great night. I, there was a lot. That no, I mean, there was, there was a that lot going why, on. That is why we pay you $1.25 an hour right there, all right? For that right. type of... <laughs> Hard hitting, uh, hard hitting things. Uh, no, I, there's there's a lot of ripples tonight. I mean, on the surface, you looked at it from a road course race, and you expected the three guys to dominate uh, in the series uh, that that do it on the road courses. And while that did happen, there was so much more along the way. It wasn't a very linear path. Uh, instead of A, B, C, D, we kind of went A, and then well, hey, let's go over here and look at this. And then, well, we're now we're at now we're at number two, and then somehow it's Z, but now we're gonna come back. So there was just so much going on. Road America does not disappoint. So there, there's my final Never. thought for you. I did there we go. I dig it. I just I just gave you a pay raise. Two fifty <laughs> at least. I thought I you were gonna it. say dollar fifty one. Oh no, I wouldn't do that. You're the banker. I know that you're too good at math, so <laughs> Uh, why don't we pay some bills here? Uh, big thanks. Speaking of bankers, right? You like paying bills. Big thanks to our sponsors here in the Lionheart Racing Series and especially to our friends at Butt Kicker who came on uh, this year as the sponsor of the Lionheart Retro Series. Butt Kicker products, they add instant immersion to any game, unlike a subwoofer that moves air and loses accuracy and force. Butt Kicker products move mass. They produce a haptic immersion. It's powerful. It's accurate. Butt Kicker products add that missing driver to car connection and bring more realism and immersion to your sessions. You can see the whole family of products at thebuttkicker.com. Promo codes LION25. LION25 gets you 25% off your order at thebuttkicker.com. That is an amazing deal. Thank you to our friends at the Butt Kicker. George and Zaldo, of course, the admins here in the Lionheart Racing Series for all that they do. Our great friends here at the Global Sim Racing Channel. And they uh, provide the software and hardware that we use for our broadcasts. And shout out especially to June Lalonde for the great music. See the info on the screen for how to get a hold of her for more great work. Big thanks to our team today. Brian, Amjet, Sean, Dougie Beard. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, head to globalsimracingchannel.com. You can find archive races there as well, a schedule of upcoming broadcasts. Follow us on Twitter at GSRC Channel, on Facebook at Global Sim Racing channel on facebook as well next race coming up october 17th we get a week off before we head to the roaming hills of napa and a race at sonoma brian and i promise we're going to do that broadcast after consuming an entire bottle of napa valley wine prior to the race it's the worst that could happen man amjad must be checked out i was waiting for him in my ear to just be like what <laughs> didn't get a word uh, we also, and in fact, we're going to make all the drivers of the series also consume an entire bottle of Napa Valley wine before that race. Uh, <laughs> there, that got Amjad's attention. Uh, we also have some upcoming races. They're scrolling across the stream here. Uh, and uh, make sure you check us out, Global Sim Racing Channel, as well as the iRacing Esports Network. Got an IndyCar race coming up next week at Montreal for the IndyCar Series. Going to be a lot of fun there as well. For everybody here at GSRC, the iRacing Esports Network, Lionheart Series, I'm Jason Galvin. Thanks so much for spending some time with us on a Thursday night. Remember, folks, Newman's first law. Your brakes are useless when you're upside down. Good night. <laughs>